In this episode, I had a fantastic conversation with Roshan, founder of GoSats, an Indian Bitcoin rewards startup. Roshan turned out to be a Bitcoin OG, has been involved in the crypto space in India since 2014 and recently launched India's first Bitcoin reward debit card. We discussed why he started GoSats, the GoSats debit card and all its features, the challenges in running a crypto startup in India, his views on Ethereum versus Bitcoin and lots more. I really enjoyed this conversation and I hope you do too. Hi Roshan, thanks for coming on Sunny Bitcoin. Hey, hey Sandeep, happy to be here. Thanks for having me. So Roshan, tell us a little bit about your background, how you got involved in crypto. You're like the new boy on the block and how did you start (laughs) GoSats? (laughs) <laughs> that's interesting yeah so uh, yeah i mean i kind of like so bitcoin kind of like consumed me in 2014 january when i first saw this uh, gold coin in the times of india newspaper then um, it guys kind of like struck to me like what the hell this is it's it's so weird and yeah and then uh, coming from a tech background i was very inquisitive as to how it works and uh, after a little bit of googling i came across the github uh, source code and i was like wow like something like this is open source like why is why why is this open source? You know, and uh, after re- after reading through the code and uh, it kind of like I got this understanding that you know this is some this is some sort of a money, it's some sort of a new kind of a uh, revolutionary finance thing, and uh, it's built by machines. I mean, like, and that was very, that was very interesting for me. And after that, I just like spent a lot of time, I think weeks, just trying to understand this thing, read the white paper, and at that time in India there wasn't a lot, there wasn't a lot of information on Bitcoin. I mean, the number of people that even knew about Bitcoin was just a handful in the entire country and uh, nothing on Google and things like that. So uh, then I started like uh, coding some stuff on my own. So I did a little bit of mining and uh, understanding how it was. I used to make like 10 Satoshis a week. And uh, this and it, and it didn't even make sense, even though like this was during the time of like when uh, there was hardly anything about Bitcoin. Right. Uh, and uh, and then, yeah, then I think I just kind of like built some protocols. I launched something called Saffron Coin. On in April in twenty in two thousand fourteen, that was the kind of like the first cryptocurrency to come from an Indian founder, and yeah, and that kind of like uh, took off at that time. And I was working on atomic swaps and cross blockchain communications and all this before even Ethereum came up. So I was using the Bitcoin smart contract protocol, which was something called Counterparty at that time. So uh, yeah, that was that was fun. But uh, but then yeah, and then, and then I kind of like uh, was attending a few Bitcoin meetups in Bangalore. That's where I met Satwik. So Satwik from Unocoin, the founder of Unocoin. So uh, he uh, invited me to a place in Jayanagar. He was like, you know, no, we're having this meetup and come over. And so he actually found me on Bitcoin Talk. That's where I kind of like put up on Saffron Coin. Like, Bitcoin Talk was where all the OGs were there at the time. And yeah, I kind of like uh, hung out and were there and met a lot of uh, great Bitcoin folk uh, in, in, in Bangalore. It was good to see all these people like so passionate about something like this. And uh, that's when... Um, yeah, and, and after a few uh, meetups and a few months, uh, they offered me a job to work at Unocoin as the CTO. So uh, then I, yeah, and I think it was somewhere around, yeah, so later that year where I kind of like joined as a chief scientist at, at Unocoin. So that was kind of like the start of this crypto star journey. And yeah, I built a lot of stuff. And uh, I think I was at Unocoin for like a couple of years. Then um, I was with another uh, Ethereum exchange, the first Ethereum exchange of India through it. And, uh, and yeah, and then after that, it was just about, you know, like kind of like getting mainstream adoption to Bitcoin. I saw this like, you know, you know, like there are too many exchanges and all this coming up, but nobody's focusing on the mainstream audience. And what happens is that whenever the bull run happens, we have all these audience trying to trying to FOMO into the market. And uh, some of them like, you know, get uh, get sucked at the top. And uh, so I wanted to I wanted to build like a clear, like a clear, like a really nice and a, and a risk free kind of a system. Uh, that to get to get people onto the Bitcoin bandwagon, like uh, no, nobody should be. I, I always believe that Bitcoin is for everybody, and nobody should be left behind. Even if they don't like Bitcoin, let them hold some Bitcoin. They might thank us like later on after a few years. Uh, that's how I strongly believe in it. And uh, after that, yeah, I mean, so that then the idea came up. Like I was, I was doing a lot of market research, and I was like, India is one of the largest growing e-commerce industries in the world. Rewards, rewards is huge over here. Cashbacks is huge over here. And I was like, can I can I build something where I can give Bitcoin as a cashback to users? And that was the kind of, kind of like the uh, the spark uh, that was. I think this happened like last year itself. And I was too much, I was well into Lightning Network in, as well, so I felt like you know it'd be a nice way to kind of like build this kind of a like, seamless kind of uh, Bitcoin uh, transfers around. And yeah, yeah, basically give out like Bitcoin as rewards and get more and more people to the 
to the SATs uh, kind of a standard is what, is what I thought. And yeah, and then I, I, I did a little, a little bit of research, came across that a few companies in the West doing something like this as well. And I was like, wow, this is a nice market that is growing. And I thought like India India deserves something like this. And that's when I kind of like put put, put a team together. And, you know, let's, let's build this amazing protocol where we can uh, kind of like get average users, average consumers uh, onto the Bitcoin bandwagon. And um, they, don't, they don't really have to invest. They can get, kind of like get Bitcoin every time they shop. And, and people shop a lot. Like we all shop on a day, on, on a day, in our daily life. And I was like, let's reward those expenses into something that they save uh, down the line. And hopefully in the future, one day, whatever they spend will eventually become free. And this is something that I'm not saying. So, uh, a lot of our customers are saying this. So then I kind of like uh, announced GoSats uh, like towards the end of last year. And we went on a public launch in February this year. And yeah, it's been like almost like six months right now. And, uh, and yeah, and, and we've been help, uh, helping a lot of people stack Bitcoin. And, and some of the feedback that we've gotten is that uh, a, lot, a lot of our customers' parents are now holding Bitcoin because of us. So they were like, you know, this wouldn't have been possible before because trading is complicated. And, you know, it's all, there's always a certain risk amount of like, because you're investing money. And, but here it's like you're getting it for free for, some, for something that you're doing already. And this was a huge uh, problem that we were solving for all these mainstream folk. And there are many of these folk in India. And, we, and that was really great to hear that we're getting people, that are, their mothers and their aunts and all like onto, the, onto Bitcoin. And they're buying their daily groceries and they're stacking sats along with it. So that was something that really exciting to us. And then yeah, I think I'm not, and I'm not sure if you realize, but if you heard, but just a couple of days ago on Independence Day, we announced the first Bitcoin rewards card. So this kind of like takes our vision even like even further away where it's a, it's a prepaid card that can be swiped across any POS device in India and Bitcoin can be stacked at every single swipe, whether it's online or an offline purchase. So uh, that is something really exciting. And uh, we hope to roll this out in, in the next, in the coming days. So I want to dive deeper into the products that you offer. But so you're not at all a new boy on the block. You're an absolute OG. You've been involved in Bitcoin. I didn't know that you've been part of the Unocoin team. And okay, awesome. So <laughs> massive Bitcoin background experience uh, um, behind GoSats. Do you, for the audience who doesn't understand the meaning of SATs, do you want to explain what SATs are? And I, I was actually Googling GoSats and I found a company called, which sends satellites up, uh, but then I realized it's not your... <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, go, go go ahead and explain Sats to the audience. Yeah, so 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 I think with our with our recent SEO effort, we kind of we have we kind of like started ranking a little above them. <laughs> uh, but yeah, at, at least Google doesn't correct you saying, "Do you did you mean goats?" <laughs> that was what happened first. <laughs> so you know, yeah. So um, so Sats in a in a very in a very simple way, Sats is to Bitcoin what Pesa is to rupee. So it's it's a it's a denomination. It's it's a, it's a it's the smallest unit of a Bitcoin and uh, one Bitcoin has about like 10 crore sats or 100 million sats. Uh, so yeah, so it's basically a, uh, uh, because of why, why, the reason why I think that Satoshi is a genius, the one who created this protocol is that all the currencies, all the money that we've had in existence were, were only divided up to two decimal places. But Satoshi had this vision where he probably thought that Bitcoin is either going to fail or succeed. There's no middle ground for Bitcoin. And he was like, you know, if it succeeds, it, it, the price would be humongous because of the low supply. And they would need a lot more decimals to kind of like denote things. And I, and I would say that in the next five years, people are not, are not going to say like, this thing costs 0. 0.0003 Bitcoin or whatever. They're going to say it's going to cost 30,000 sats. And that is the, uh, and, and that's one of the reasons why even Dogecoin had a pump recently is because people feel like uh, it's unit economic. Like people feel like it's easier to say whole numbers. And that's what I think like SATs is a standard that needs to kind of like be a little bit more adopted. Like many people in India don't care, uh, but but it's picking up in the West a lot. Uh, so I feel like, you know, like 1000 SATs, 10,000 SATs, this is what we are going to talk in terms of like payments. And all this will be settled on the main Bitcoin network and which is all like kind of like abstracted to the user's point of view. So for the user, it'll be very simple. That's what I feel like SATs is and will, will be positioned in the future. Yeah, and uh, just again for the audience, Sats is like um, kind of uh, named after the uh, inventor Satoshi. So, uh, so you're betting on Sats being used. So no go bits, but go Sats. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I I heard about the bits thing as we're trying to pick up. <laughs> <laughs> so, which are uh, uh, do you want to uh, name some of the other similar products which are there out in the international market? And do you have any idea whether they are succeeding or whether they have any uh, traction in their markets? 
like a like a bitcoin rewards or product yeah i mean like i mean if i'm naming i think i'm advertising them <laughs> but uh, it's it's very simple like people can just google and say like you know bitcoin rewards companies in the world and they'll find a bunch and these are some really amazing companies like com- uh, like some products that even i like i really like the vision that they have i haven't been able to use any because none of them are there in india uh, and you need and they kind of are restricted to a particular geography so uh, but yeah but whatever reading about it it's uh, it's something uh, really great so there are there are quite a few i mean like uh, uh, us has like two big ones and even the existing one if i have to name existing ones like blockfi and even gemini they are also coming up with bitcoin rewards credit cards and things like that so this is definitely like heating up right now yeah i definitely agree it's the next uh, big thing i have i'm in the wait list and i'm i cannot wait for my uh re- you know bitcoin rewards card absolutely what's your wait list number what's your wait list number i do i do not <laughs> directly talk to the head of business unit over there i'm like i'm a bitcoin influencer now you might <laughs> you, you definitely should jack me up on the way, you know on the waiting list uh, but i haven't got right. mine yet so tell us a little bit more about the product that you offer i think you said that you were offering a bitcoin rewards kind of a product before and now the launch of what i bl- believe is a rupee uh, debit card so tell us a little bit more about that Yeah, it's it's a rupee prepaid card. Um, so uh, so what we've exist, what we've had right now, are about brands that we tie up closely with. Like we have over like one twenty brands, like your Flipkarts and the Ubers. So all these different brands as well as vouchers for these brands is what we list on our platform, and people shop at all these brands and they earn a fraction of uh, Bitcoin on every single uh, on every purchase that they do. And these and these purchases vary. Like it, we, I think we give out like over up to twenty twenty five percent. uh for some brands as well in terms of bitcoin back so this was only possible with the brands that we have but with the launch of the prepaid card of the card uh, of the bitcoin card we can offer bitcoin for brands that we don't even have partnerships with so it because it can be used anywhere like it can be used on your grocery store that's next to your house uh, if they accept a card payment and uh that is what we feel like you know it's going to be a big, it's going to bring a big shift into this entire ecosystem where people can just stack bitcoin at every single purchase uh, that they can So, how did the partnerships uh, go? The conversations when you went to these large e-commerce companies and told them that you are looking for a partnership and you want to get give a Bitcoin reward back, and with the kind of uh, perception that Bitcoin has uh, in India, how did this, uh, some of those conversations go? How did you manage to get these tie-ups? Yeah, so see, uh, I mean, for them, it's mostly about performance marketing. Like many of them will have existing affiliate programs and things like that. And for them, what matters is sales. Uh, see, they 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 do not want to touch Bitcoin. Like, of course, that they make it very clear. Like, you know, they don't touch crypto in any way, and that's where we come in as a company, where we kind of like underwrite all the regulatory risk, and we're like, you know, like we take care of all those things. Like, we are a Bitcoin company, and uh, we can offer customers Bitcoin because I mean, see, uh, what we've noticed from some brands as well that uh, closely want to work with us and offer Bitcoin on their own platforms, and what they say is that you know, Bitcoin helps us to get more customers. It helps us for acquiring customers. and uh, user retention as well instead of setting up their own linter loyalty program they say you know we just give out bitcoin and and that should kind of like take customers from the competition and bring it to us and that and that's how even we come up with like but but they don't understand all this they're like you know okay how can i set up a node do i need a wallet and things like that and we're like you know you don't care about anything anything like that just call our api and we and we and we make all these things happen behind the scene so uh, this so the brands deal with arna they take inr as payment they give us inr and we make and we make that inr convertible to bitcoin with our own liquidity partners and we give bitcoin to the user so we take care of all the bitcoin conversions but the brands only deal with inr so how are you able to reward, uh, reward up to i think uh, on your website it's mentioned 25% for one of the cards i think it's called the introductory card and the elite card you offer i believe 100% 100% uh, yeah how does the economics uh, work and how do you make money Yeah uh, no uh, so um, so there are a couple of ways that rewards work one is like a fixed reward like you can say like you know you swipe and you get 1% or 0.5% flat i mean sometimes people might might prefer something like that where something is steady but at the end of the day like you might after a few months you might get you might get bored in a way i don't think bored is the right word but something like that you might you might just get you know a little bit it's annoying the same thing every now to you anymore right it's just yeah, i mean uh, yeah. because i because i feel like uh, I feel like that with credit card points and and other things. I'm like it's it's just not exciting enough. And this is Bitcoin, you know. So and uh, and what we wanted is what we we want to create like a variable kind of an algorithm. So uh, what we are like, you know, every time you swipe because we are honest because even like when Google Pay launched uh, uh, Scratch cards, it was very exciting. So it's it's a humans like those that kind of like 
that exciting gamification thing and this is bitcoin and we want to make it really fun and we're like you know like let's offer like something something like a variable kind of rewards where you could win like even 100% 10% 0.5% as well so it would vary depending on a lot of different factors and a lot of different factors over a period of time and we even offer like one full bitcoin for someone so this could potentially change someone's life you know like if they, if they keep accumulating one person for like a long time it will be i mean it would, it would take a long time to get to the one bitcoin mark but if you're able to offer like one bitcoin for someone that is for someone on basically even a 100 rupee shop or for shopping for even 100 rupees it could be a game changer for that person it's the same thing with the 100% cashback as well so we'd be we'd be announcing some sort of a wheel like a like a like a rowle wheel in in, in a way that uh, can be spun inside the app and uh, every purchase they can kind of like see and it's all different different variable rewards so so it also it also push a person to see like oh what, what did i get today it won't be the same thing it will oh, be like yeah. a lot of different different things and like and a lucky draw that, yeah a, a wheel in a way like it's because we call yeah. it the bitcoin wheel and right. yeah and there are and there are different different percentages that you get in the wheel and it's all diff- and it's all different variables but over a period of time we do we do feel that you know the uh, like over like 6 months or 8 months of using the card a user will average around like 2 to 3% on their spends uh so that that is how we kind of like build our algorithm so you've kind of uh, taken the standard 2 to 3% which debit cards credit cards yes. give back to users but you've credit cards, this get this debit cards don't give anything actually debit cards don't give anything yeah uh and you've kind of built this variability so somebody could get more and how do you how do you finance this 2 to 3% like from where do you get this to give it yeah, back so to the users so uh, as i mentioned about the the brand partnerships and even since we are part of the we are part of the network of uh, rupay itself like let's say rupay visa mastercard there's an interchange that that goes in these networks so we may so we take the amounts from that which we which we get got it and the thing that struck me the most uh, from the coin telegraph article on gosats which just came a couple of days back was that you've launched this card in partnership with the national payments corporation of india actually when i was in zepay the npci office was in the same building as our office in pkc and i've had meetings with them uh, and for the audience npci is a part of the rbi the central bank of india so with all the regulatory uncertainty around bitcoin in india and we know what the rbi feels about bitcoin how did you manage to pull this off i uh, know so uh, the coin telegraph article was actually like wrong in a lot of ways <laughs> like uh, this wasn't an article by in us media. okay <laughs> that from our news so it is wrong in a lot of ways and they even spelled a company name wrong they, they call it ghost stats so you know so it, it i mean it's it's a lot of ways wrong there, i mean there's no partnership with npci or rupay for that matter so there are there are only there are only two uh, companies that uh, i mean two entities that can offer cards in india one is banks that can offer debit and credit cards and the second is prepaid instrument providers that can offer prepaid instruments which is what we are using a prepaid card so so i mean we we spoken to the folks at npci and they've connected us with the folks uh, with, with with the ppi folks and the banks as well but we prefer to go with the ppi folks because they're more startup friendly and and, uh, and yeah i mean and, and uh, it's like even the commercials work uh, worked better for us and uh, so yeah so the prepaid for uh, uh, company is called transcorp so so they are so they are co-branding this card with us and we are just using rupay as a network to be or to be online like we could have chosen visa or a master like, okay r- right now we can't choose mastercard but we could have chosen visa uh, but yeah uh, but rupay was something we wanted to feel like you know it's an indian thing and and we wanted to uh, this to run on indian rails um something uh, on that aspect and that's why we were like and we, and, and we spoke to a few folks at npc like we i kind of like cold email the the rupay uh, website and that's how they kind of like got in touch and they connected us to this uh, this uh, transcorp that you know transcorp and a few banks as well that these people can help you out so uh, that was the kind of partnership and the coin telegraph people are kind of like misquoted and uh, and that's kind of like creating some sort of a, a ruckus as well no worry sunny bitcoin is the year uh, to uh, you know for the rescue so <laughs> but I, but but i'm amazed that npci actually had conversations and that they um, well i mean there's no need so for one of the main questions that like, like even even them and even transcorp as well they one of the major question they ask is like uh, do you do any sort of payments in crypto and that that is a concern across across the country right and we don't do any payments we are not we are not an exchange so we are actually the first crypto company in india that is not an exchange and uh, this was something very surprising and interesting to them and they're like okay so if you're not doing crypto payments you're not allowing buying and selling of bitcoin then it's just a rewards which is something that they were uh, they were like they were okay with that, that that's how we were able to build a partnership with transcorp 
that you know so we're not doing any payments because uh, crypto should never be connected to the card so bitcoin is an internal loyalty program which we do it from our application but it's i mean it's, it's the same thing with the brands that i told you earlier as well that we've tied up with uh, they don't deal with any crypto it's all inr we we make the uh, like we are in the position of converting these inr into sats that is our, that's what our company does and none of these partnerships that we have they deal with anything like that and i think the coin telegraph article did not mention that part for which a lot of people thought that oh the regulators are, are fans of crypto and they're promoting like this is going to get out of hand and uh, and it's a good thing that this is there so that people watching this will realize that you know it's this this is nothing true uh, what is written in that smaller reach compared to coin telegraph with sunny bitcoin but whatever <laughs> we'll still try and um, get the word out uh, but that's interesting so in terms of the cards that you offer i think there are two cards right there is an intro and an elite what's the main yeah. difference between the two yeah so the main difference is that the elite is a premium metal card it's a, it's a, like it's a, it's it's a, it's a classy sexy looking metal card uh, and it's golden color the other one of course is a, it's a, it's a typical plastic uh, card right and in terms of benefits to the users besides yeah looking so cool, uh, the know. premium will definitely give like more cashbacks and as i mentioned like there's up to 100% that we'll that, that the algorithm will offer but for the uh, intro it's up to 25% and the premium one uh, uh, will be offering like a couple of airport lounge uh, access uh, in a quarter and uh, an accidental insurance of uh, 2 lakh rupees and then the, and there's like a there's a price difference as well so the elite card the uh, elite card has an annual fee of one four double nine, whereas the intro card is the is a it it doesn't have any annual fee, but there's like an activation charge of like I think it's four ninety nine was what we uh, uh, mentioned, uh, which is a one time uh, charge to use the card. So I've never really used a rupee card uh, uh, ever. I've no always used a no Visa. So at a okay. POS, it's the it's the same. Like anybody who accepts yeah. Visa, Mastercard will be able to accept this card as well. Yeah, I mean, the, I mean, the, so, so I think it's, so. So when rupee kind of like uh, was developed, right? Uh, they were like every every POS POS machine had to kind of like be updated uh, to re- to recognize the rupee card as well because otherwise they would only accept like Visa, Mastercard, or your Diners Club and all that. So they had to get upgraded and it was and it was necessary for every single merchant in India to upgrade their uh, POS devices. So all of them like everywhere uh, rupee is supported. So it's a regulatory requirement, and I think they are trying to get the infrastructure ready so that rupee can become more and more famous, and India can control its kind of this retail payment Absolutely. network. Like like China has done. Yeah, because we because even I mean, like see what what we are launching like we are we, I mean I honestly believe that this could be the best prepaid or or debit card in India like or, or in the comparison because none of them would offer these offer these kind of rewards and uh, and we would kind of like get a lot of people shifting from other platforms to this and we want to and then that was that was the reason why we wanted to build it on Rupee like we want to even help this ecosystem grow in India and uh, and also like provide something where you know like like crypto is also crypto is also contributing. To the growth of this in India, you know uh, that is something that because uh, is, is something that even we wanted, uh, and it's it's all like baby steps, right? I mean, all of us like want like good good regulations for crypto in India, so these are like baby steps, and, and this is a part that we want to play in to kind of like uh, help this and make sure Rupee gets a lot of uh, transactions as well. That's awesome. And how do the baby steps look like in terms of numbers, in terms of new users and transactions? It's been what few months now since you've launched, as you mentioned, just in the beginning yes. of this year. Yeah, it's been a few months. So I mean, so uh, so I mean, so, so so with the card, right? We've only opened up like uh, five thousand cards for uh, sale, basically, like for for booking. And yeah, man, I think we've we already so, like uh, given away like sixty percent of that right now. I guess in two days. So uh, in two so, yeah. days. So that's just yeah, open. Yeah. Oh yeah, you mentioned that the card is just a new, absolutely brand new product. So yeah. you're close to selling out in a very short period of time. Yeah, yeah, because we, yeah, because uh, we, we just want to keep like five thousand cars in the first batch because we want to do a lot of testing behind the scene, and uh, and, yeah, and and kind of like get the right uh, things done, and then we would open up to the to the larger uh, public. And uh, I think you correct me if I'm wrong. You've raised an investment round recently as well, right? Can you give us some yes. details about that? Yeah, so we closed a pre-seed, a seed round. I mean, there's no. <laughs> you, let, let's call it a seed round uh, of 700k so yeah we've had some like really great uh, folk uh, supporters like uh, Fulgur Ventures Alphabet SBX Capital and we were part of the Stax Accelerator as well that have really been helpful and a few, and a few angels uh, as well I think uh, yeah Satik Vishwanath from Unicorn is an angel as well and uh, even Ajit Kurana of Zeppe so um, I mean and yeah so we have some really like, great folks to support us on this journey that's awesome. And can you give us some idea of what is a Stacks Accelerator if anybody else in the audience is looking to approach them? 
yeah so there are there are uh, actually a focus on bitcoin protocols so uh, so stacks so stacks is actually a protocol as a blockchain that uh, enables smart contracts on bitcoin so yeah i mean so uh, we kind of like applied to them and because we were interested in you know interested in getting being part of an accelerator where they kind of like train you in a way you know it's 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 like a gym for startups <laughs> right uh, and they yeah and they kind of like help you help you get towards product market fit and they also like fund you some fund you an amount um so yeah and uh, and through the accelerator we we also met a lot of other investors so we had a demo day and all that so to which we we could raise money from other investors as well um so yeah i mean stacks is a stacks is a brilliant uh, it's a brilliant accelerator like i would i would like if any new if any founders are watching this any new founders and they and they want to raise uh, uh, an initial amount for the company i would definitely suggest to uh, apply for stacks uh, accelerator like like they work with defi they work with nfts and various other blockchain products as well if anybody interested do apply i i think the next cohort starts like towards end of the year as well and so right now gosats is in the name limited to sats as rewards or what about other cryptos are you a bitcoiner are you <laughs> yeah so i've been getting this question a lot uh, of lately and um, so see it, it doesn't matter like it's it's not about what i am it's about what the market needs as to, as to how this product has to be positioned we do not want to become another exchange where we have like 100 different tokens uh, you know we want to stick to some because our own our our entire mission was to onboard people onto bitcoin in a seamless manner like we want we want them to hold this hardest asset ever in the most seamless manner and the moment we start getting into different different tokens and we we attract a different kind of a crowd where it, where i mean like it 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 doesn't really make sense where we kind of like lose the essence of what we have what we have built the simplicity and the ease and the ease uh, ness of what we have built and uh, we want to stick to that and, and then if you have other tokens then the, then there will always be a question like you have abc why not have xyz and then it will always it's a never ending topic right and then and then we have to set up a compliance team to see if this token is actually genuine is it a scam and and especially when we are dealing with with a financial product in our in our application itself with a card we need to be very careful as to as to what we actually like think about and we feel like bitcoin is the best is the most genuine there's no pre mine that nobody knows who the founder is it's it kind of like fits our standards and uh, we just want to like keep that in mind for now so i guess you're a true bitcoin og if bitcoin or sats <laughs> is in your name so i'm sunny bitcoin and you're go sats <laughs> and we we, <laughs> we no, I, up, I was one of the earliest ethereum smart contract developers as well like i kind of like got i got access to the early versions of ethereum i used to build a lot of contracts you know but then yeah, when i'm only stay in the space uh you kind of like i do not want to get into that conversation but you 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 can better no, i absolutely here. want to <laughs> <laughs> no, of course for well, what's your take on ethereum you you have the um, uh, you know first hand view you've been yeah. an ethereum developer i limit yeah. my conversations to bitcoin but then also means to kind of tell the audience what not to get involved with especially if you're looking for hard money and long term money what were your views what how was your experience see when i first came across ethereum i was like stunned i was like wow you know because you always in this one thing where you know it's it's a it's digital gold it's like this money and then suddenly it's, it's like you know there's something called programmable money as well and you can build so many different contracts and things like that but then i mean of course like see like whenever when you are when you're from a tech side you you get drawn to ethereum and a lot of different smart contract protocols very easily and it take and it and, it, and you and you need to kind of like spend a long or a large amount of time to understand how all that works and then once you see the development that happens and you and you see things like the hacks and the turing like in the beginning like in early stages i love the concept of turing complete now for some of the audience that don't understand so turing complete basically means that uh, machines that can be programmable like there's no like like you cannot know uh, what is the outcome of, uh, unless the program kind of like runs but uh, with bitcoin and non turing completeness you can actually calc- you can actually predict the outcome before it runs yeah there are limits so that is what i feel like even right now where you cannot have your your defi applications and all these like crazy heavy uh, application that have billions of dollars logged into a protocol that that run, runs in loops and uh, if that loop gets buggy or or you know it's it, it, there's a runtime error or something like that there's a chance for the entire blockchain to be congested and and funds to be lost right and a lot of uh, such funds have been hacked and a lot of buggy smart contracts and all have been written so uh, i mean even stacks for example they're they're building this language which is non turing complete and once you see all this once you kind of like zoom out right like once you stop becoming a fanboy and you start zooming out and you see what really matters and that's when i i'll tell you something like even after like believing in bitcoin for 7 years i've only understood what bitcoin is in the past one year even then i i feel like i'm still a noob 
But in the past one year, I've seen the kind of development I see. I'm like, that's when I realized that Bitcoin is so much more bigger than a currency and some sort of a payment system. People talk about block sizes and transaction fees. I'm like, Bitcoin is so much more bigger. And then I reread the Satoshi white paper and it made a lot more sense to me than what it made earlier. And then I realized the vision is to build this entire new decentralized internet. The new TCP, IP and, that, and Lightning and all are like layers on top of it. And settlements will happen on Bitcoin. And then Michael Saylor says, uh, like watching a few, a few talks of Michael Saylor as well, we kind of like emphasize the same fact. This ultimate settle layer, settlement layer of proof of work, it, it has to be slow. Like it being slow is by design. You know, it's a feature, not a bug. And you want to build your new payment platforms, build on top of Bitcoin. Uh, that is what I see Bitcoin right now. I would never understand that. I would have never understood this like years ago. But now seeing what all is happening, I feel this is the way things have to move. Yeah. So for the audience, this is a guy who's a de- who's got a tech background, who's worked in one of the earliest exchanges in India, who's do- who's been doing Ethereum smart contracts and coming to this conclusion. So, I mean, it has a lot more weight than somebody who's kind of anecdotally making these opinions. And again, just for the audience, not being Turing complete is actually a feature and a conscious decision because, of course, it was possible for the creator of Bitcoin to be Turing complete, but that's a feature, not a bug. And that's the thing with so many of these kind of superficial comparisons that every difference has a trade-off, which is only possible to appreciate after you spend years in the ecosystem, you know, and that's a journey I think I have taken, you've taken, and so many people take. What are your future plans with uh, GoSats? Any uh, uh, Sunny Bitcoin special announcement? I asked this, this is my 16th episode. I've asked this and nobody ever has given me a Sunny Bitcoin special announcement. Roshan, are you going to change the trend? <laughs> I mean, if, if, if we had done this before the Independence Day, then I guess that would have been the car. Oh would have been the God, I had actually written it to you. I would have, <laughs> I would have beaten Coin Telegraph, and uh, we would not also have any of the wrong news and that would have been much better. <laughs> but yeah, but I mean, uh, so I mean, see, our focus is, is the card right now. We want to get this out because uh, we, a lot of people, so we have this wait list that is open. A lot of people are joining it. And I would just say like, you know, like uh, like the first comes, the, the ones that join the, the join earliest will get early access access to this. And, uh, and yeah, and uh, we'll be kind of like uh, building our own infrastructure out and we should be getting the card in time for the shopping season. Like we are planning like hard to get it before the Dasera and the Diwali because a lot of customers saying they want to spend and they want to earn sats on every spend. So we want to get this out uh, out before that. And uh, yeah, it'll be super exciting to kind of like see how that how that pans out because I mean like I'm sure that all of us have I've seen all these cars in foreign countries and all you know people stacking Bitcoin I'm like dude let us like India can't be left behind in, in, in such a revolution like we need to be a part of it absolutely I mean this is super exciting and I think great timing with the festival season coming out and maybe just maybe the uh, next phase of the bull cycle so I think the timing couldn't be better what do you how how large is the team right now yeah so we're a team of I mean it's it's, it's a pretty small team but really smart people of six uh, that I'm really privileged and honored to uh, to work alongside with. That's awesome. And what do you think of, you know, you've been in the crypto environment in India since Unocoin and since really a long time now. Do you think the environment has changed being a crypto startup? Is it, uh, do you face difficulties with your bank accounts or regulators? I know you are slightly different than an exchange. So it could be easier for you. You don't have to do KYC and you're not really a financial company in that way. But um, how are things on the ground? Yeah, um, I mean, see, uh, so when you have to go for approvals, I mean, bank accounts, I think is pretty much sorted out across across every other crypto, crypto company. But let's say if you have to integrate a payment gateway, right? Like, see, we also we also sell products on our platform. Like, we sell gift gift cards and gift vouchers. And for that, we need a we need a form of payment that comes to us. And for that, we need a payment gateway. And uh, and even though like we've spoken to all the major payment gateways, and even though we explain that you know we don't deal with crypto, like we're not an exchange and stuff. The moment they see Bitcoin on the website. It raises uh, flags, you know, and that is something that we, I mean, we've been rejected by a lot of payment gateways uh, just for this reason, even though like we have conversation like, dude, we are not selling Bitcoin. Like their their terms and conditions state that uh, cryptocurrency cannot be used uh, in a payment gateway. They're like, we're not using cryptocurrency. We are taking, we're selling, we're selling gift cards, man. We're selling some product, but then they don't understand, you know, everybody's a little bit paranoid in that sense. But but then we, we, we actually got a payment gateway that understood exactly what we're doing. So, uh, so we, we, we partner with free charge, uh, for this. So we've listed free charge on the platform and through free charge, we're able to take credit card and debit card payments for selling our, for selling our gift cards. So yeah, apart from that, 
I mean, uh, with uh, with uh, other stuff like I mean, uh, so whenever we get money and all that, it's like always the bank, the bank personal do try to find. You know, it's like, are, are you a crypto company and all that? We're like, we are a rewards company. You know, we are like a typical e-commerce platform. Like, and so so see, one of the one of the uh, struggles that we are undergoing is that we it's difficult for us to showcase that crypto doesn't mean exchanges. You know, yeah. it's, it's, in India. It's, a new, it's a new world. It's a new. There are so many different things in it. Like you know, if you do, if you're dealing with NFTs, doesn't mean you're dealing with something with exchangers or you know they don't understand that because for them crypto just means buying and selling and money laundering and, and you know something that's really bad so we want to kind of like uh, bring this way where you know it's it's we, we're not treating crypto as a speculative asset or trading or something like that we, we are building a different uh, corner in this entire in the entire space uh, so some of them start understanding i mean these are like early days so we hope to kind of like build this route and help everybody See, even the officials and regulators, they all they all want help from us as well, right? To understand how this entire thing works. So that's where even we want to portray saying that crypto is a much bigger, so it's a huge world and exchange is just one part of it. Protocols are just one part of it. There are so many, like today we have, we have, we had DeFi last year, the hype and now NFTs. Who knows what we get in the next two or three years? It will be something else. So yeah, that is what I, I kind of like uh, see in this, in this entire space. And what's your current, do you have any takes on the current Bitcoin price or the state of the market? <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, I've only interviewed people from exchanges. And so this question is like by default, it's in my DNA by now that I have to ask this <laughs> question. So I know you're a rewards company, just like Bitcoin exchanges used to say they're a blockchain company. <laughs> but yeah. but still. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, so see, um, like, uh, like I definitely believe that we are in a, in a, in a strong upside. The, the the drop that we had over is just probably a, just a little of a shake off of a market. But I do believe that we are in a in a strong upside. And and uh, like I I would still not like if if I'm if I'm buying for long term I would definitely buy Bitcoin. Again, no 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 advice anywhere. But um, no financial advice. You're not a certified financial advisor. I mean, that, that's that's just strange. Like like, <laughs> like if you are like, if you are really believing in Bitcoin, of course it's financial advice. Like I don't, why would you be in Bitcoin? Like, <laughs> I keep saying that, but then I, but I, I, then I think the kind of like safeguard itself from legal stuff. You have to say that because you know if you don't, if you don't, if you don't believe that Bitcoin is going up, then just get out of the industry. Like you don't belong in the industry. So that's the way I look at it. But yeah, but um, all that aside, I, I do believe that uh, I was still, I was still wait for Bitcoin to break a certain threshold. I, I would want it to reach the trillion dollar market cap again if I have to invest into Bitcoin. Otherwise, I would just wait until because I, I find this to be very sideline. And I would just wait until that $53,000 mark, mark is broken again. Then according to you, it's the beginning of the next kind of version of the rally. This is the current is the current rally. Like if you zoom out, it's still a current rally. It's yeah. just that the small correction that happened up. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, by the end of that, like I, I, I do believe that we'll probably see a bear market towards the beginning of next year. And, and, and see, and, we, and I don't think we'll be having bear markets the way we've had before. Because right now, there are too many people involved. There are governments involved. Like El Salvador has it as a currency. And uh, we and I, I do believe that uh, it won't be like those bear markets that we typically see. It will be more like corrections. Uh, yeah, not the like the 60-80% drawdowns. And this is what yeah, Daniel refers to I mean, as I mean, the first if that, if, that, if that happens, then it doesn't make sense when people like PayPal and all are holding Bitcoin in the reserve. Tesla as well. Not PayPal. Yeah, PayPal as well. And Tesla as well. Even SpaceX that we got to know. So I don't think uh, it, it would make sense for a 60-80% drop. Yeah, I agree. I am very much of the opinion with Daniel's view. I think he started calling it the first super cycle. And I believe, but uh, I think time will uh, prove um, whether this is right or wrong. And your take on uh, buying Ethereum and Dogecoin? <laughs> um, so yeah, the laugh, uh, the laugh I, is I, enough. <laughs> I, I do see Ethereum definitely having a, having a great uh, upside strength. So I mean, I don't know, like, I, like I, I definitely feel it should, should go a few excess from here. Uh, I mean, because everything kind of like follows the entire uh, Bitcoin market, and uh, and we don't know when the Ethereum 2.0 comes out. Like, I've, I've personally been waiting it for, waiting for it since three years. Are you bullish and about Ethereum's uh, 2.0 version for Ethereum's? Community? That's one of the reasons why I kind of like went away from Ethereum. Like, I, I was a huge Ethereum developer. Right? I, I I even built the first stablecoin from India, which was an ERC20 token on Ethereum. So I was I'm a huge Ethereum fanboy. You were, uh, but then yeah, I were, uh, I was, and uh, but then the moment they started talking about proof of stake and and it, yeah, I just kind of just went, and then and then they started having an internal war between the Bitcoin and the Ethereum community. Community, I'm like, dude, everybody has to go together. Uh, together, and I'm, I mean, people talk about BDC maximalists, fine. I mean, I know that they are a little bit toxic as well, but what about the Ethereum maximalists? You know. And uh, because Bitcoin is called a sound money, they are saying that is ultra sound money, yeah. and it's just just, just nonsense. <laughs> so to- toxicity 
you know, we can leave that aside, but the fundamentals don't uh, change, uh, right? Yeah. I mean, um, yeah. so you actually uh, thought that the Ethereum's new version is yeah. not a good thing for the Ethereum community and for Ethereum. And that's the reason, of course, you went away. That's what yeah, I believe. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm not an advocate of, like, I, like I've been uh, developing things on pure coin as well, which are the first uh, proof of stake uh, uh, coin. And I, I, I don't see, like, I, I mean, it kind of like takes the entire thing. I mean, like energy, People that don't really understand crypto will talk about energy issues and things like that. But uh, I mean, like you want to you want to reward somebody that has a bunch of tokens. I mean, that that will basically uh, push a lot of uh, people to buy in private sales, so that they hold a bunch of tokens, they can earn more staking, they can stake more and earn more interest. Only it kind of like defeats the entire purpose of what Satoshi had built. According to me, the biggest issue is the way these decisions are made in the Ethereum community. It's highly centralized. And that's not what Bitcoin is. It's decentralized and decentralization is the biggest feature. So for me, even before going to what's actually changing, it's like the way those decisions are carried out in the Ethereum community. But Roshan, before we wrap up, how can people find you, find GoSats? How can they sign up uh, for your amazing new product? Yeah, uh, do log on to gosats.io. Um, so, uh, I mean, like you can, you can sign up for that. Like as soon as you download the app, it's, it's available on the Android and the, uh, iOS stores as well. There's also a GoSats Chrome extension that you can search on the Chrome store. Uh, so you can install the extension, you can shop normally and you can keep getting Bitcoin back. And yeah, so, so, in, so inside the app, just do, do, do join the waitlist for the card. It's, it's something really exciting. We have to figure out a way on how can my audience jump the waitlist queue and have a special link. If that happens after we stop recording with Roshan, I will post that link uh, in the in the show notes below. If that doesn't happen, then just go to <laughs> the links that Roshan just said. <laughs> I mean, like every every person that gets referred, the audience can jump up the waitlist uh, already. So okay. Every ref- but yeah, I mean, maybe we can work something with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, okay. We'll wait for that. And hopefully you will see a, a unique uh, link in the show notes uh, below. Uh, Roshan, I started this podcast uh, with a focus to cover Asians or let's say non-US Bitcoin companies, you know, like the way I was mentioning to you before we started recording, because I just think there's so much of innovation happening in the space everywhere. Uh, and barring exchanges, finally, you are my first truly Asian startup episode. So this was super fun talking to you. If you like this video podcast, please like and subscribe, Roshan. I love the product that you've launched. And I think earning rewards in Bitcoin is a no-brainer. Wishing you all the best with GoSats and thank you for coming on Sunny Bitcoin. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sunny. Pleasure having you.